Well, now things have gotten even trickier. The companies behind the Dakota Access Pipeline asked a U.S. court to intervene in its fight over its completion. And well, now this is happening. Demonstrations erupted all over the country Tuesday in one of the largest organized protests to date against the Dakota Access Pipeline. Police using mace and arresting several people in Cannonball, North Dakota, where roughly 500 demonstrators gathered, even more gathering in Chicago. In Houston, Texas, mounted officers swarmed protesters as police arrested two outside the offices of Energy Transfer Partners, the main company behind the pipeline. And still, I say, hard to legitimately oppose a pipeline at this point when the tribe failed to participate in any public comment meetings in North Dakota, did not submit written testimony in opposition to the project, and refused to meet with officials from the Dakota Access Project on seven different invitations. Joining me now with more energy, with more energy transfers partner, CEO Kelsey Warren. Such an important topic. Um, it's being covered by the mainstream media, of course, the leftist mainstream media all over, and we're seeing it, but it's being covered from one side and one side only. Now we're seeing protests not only in North Dakota, which is close proximity to my home state of South Dakota, but now in Houston, in Chicago, and elsewhere. What is the mainstream getting wrong? The facts. The facts. I mean, all you got to do is, is delve an inch deep into this process and understand we, this, this pipeline is being constructed through an area that already has two existing pipelines built in 1982. The soil has been disrupted. There are no, there's no historical sites that have been, that have been harmed. Right. Proven, proven. There's also a power line there. Also, all of this crude is being transported by rail today across right. the same river that's in question. This is silliness. And, and all you got to do is dig an inch deep to, to understand that. Oh, they don't, though. It's become emotions over logic, and those that are now joining in on these protests or joining in to oppose the Dakota Access Pipeline, they don't really know the facts. They don't know the process. They're just jumping on the bandwagon now because it's the new hip, cool thing to do, to protest anything and everything. But now the protests are getting violent. I know we saw there uh, actually coming to blows to where there, there are death threats to many members that are supporting the pipeline or even those that are opposing the tribe and other protesters. It's gotten downright ugly, and not just North Dakota, but in Texas as well. Oh my gosh, it's, it's, it's terrible. I mean, by the way, let, let me compliment the people of North Dakota. The law enforcement there is just amazing and the, and the people of North Dakota are amazing people. So it's, it's sad that this has cast a bad light on a great state. Mm -hmm. but, but shoot, our offices, uh, we, we, it, it's sad. It's really sad to see what's happened. This is not a peaceful protest. These are violent people and, and, and they just want to stop fossil fuels. This, this is really not about what they're trying to make it out to be. It's about stopping fossil fuels, which they can't do. Well, and beyond that, it's about stopping fossil fuels, but also stopping progress, stopping an industrial revolution that needs to take place in this country for us to have energy independence. And so they're outright um, protesting progress.